Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 52. I'm Ryan, the GM. It is the 19th of June 2020, and here are the players. Hello, I'm Adrian, and I play Arya Bluebird, the half of Druid. How's it going? I'm Sean, I play Bastiel, the Warforged Cleric. Hi, I'm Sophie, I play Kitlith Anastasia, a Wood Elf Rogue. Hi, I'm Stuart, I play Reach, a half elf monk. Perfect. Here we are. Sons Scott for the moment. Right, what do you remember from last time? It's been a bit. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, so, oh. Um, <laughs> we did a scrying ritual. Mm -hmm. um, could make contact with. Deramos. Uh, Deramos. <laughs> Uh, which kind of implied that he was in another realm. Mm -hmm. And when we left off, the king had just kind of bowed into the library and joined us in like a really informal way. Probably his head's probably all over the place. And uh, he's probably about to say something real reckless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who, who truly can say except me in a couple of moments? But like, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Mm. Uh, anything else? I mean, it did start with you reviving the king, so that was something. Mm. Yes, and he seems very ungrateful of it. You think? Mm -hmm. It's only been a couple hours. <laughs> um, mm. There's the whole ink thing, the whole ink gate. We found out. Ink uh, gate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna write that down now. Ink gate. Yeah, he uh I don't know, he has like weird ink magic, Aramos. He like came out of a book that had uh what's the word? Like emotional value mm -hmm. to I think is it just Crumbar? Or just all the the party as a whole? It was his favourite book. Sentimental, yeah. but yeah. Sentimental. It was just to Aramos, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we got it, did we take it or what? I think he got left behind. Yeah, left behind. Yeah. So he, he gave he gave one to Reach, but the other one that um you have his favorite book is the one that he left when he KO'd. Remember, he KO'd yeah. before seeing Justoria, the coma thing, and he was yeah. wrapped in loads of words that said "don't" and "stop" like all around him. Um, and then the king took him, but never took the book. That. That was from a uh, many sessions ago, in fact. Um, but that was a uh, just as you met Justoria, when there was like the fight in the garden. Mm. And the like, game um, Arya was the only one to stay conscious for it, I think. From what I recall, at least. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember that not being fun. You know, me being the only one up. That was um, scary as fuck. Mm. That's mm. fine. I mean, we all we all go through it. You know, uh, yeah. Anything else, Tad, or is that everything? Everything broad strokes. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Uh, right. As for goals, uh, let's have a look at the goals. Anything to change, or are we happy with them as they stand? <coughs> no. Yeah. Are, yeah. Ha happy with them as they are. That sounds good to me then. Yeah. Good. Mm. Right. So, we have um, a game starting and it opens with that balcony with all the spires lying beyond the balcony and a figure, slender of frame, wielding a black spear lands on the balcony very unceremoniously as if weakened in some way and then just the voice rumbling through from you know behind the camera is it done and uh, the figure looking up towards the camera everybody obviously in the audience recognizes Eremos now older Eremos and he says I failed and then we cut back to you guys in the library. 
and the king saying, I think it's about time we finished our conversation. And then he stands his hammer on its end. So it's obviously balanced on the floor and then several of the guards like walk in and like secure the library. He looks at Dondrabella and she kind of just like nods and he like sits up and puts that flask back in the drawer and then just leaves. He uh, just kind of like nods once to all of you guys as a group and then mm. kind of like nods to her king and then leaves the library. The doors are closed and the guards are on the outside of it all. Mm. And just stares at the group. And they break in the silence, or is he going to wait for him to go? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to wait. <laughs> Valid. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll like be really reluctant to break my get on the bell. I'll be like, no, I'm like psychically compelling yeah. not to lick my. <laughs> I cast hold on the bell. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, so he um, he, he takes off like one of the rings that he's wearing, and he's kind of like fidgeting with it in his hands. And uh, after like that kind of awkward silence of like all the kind of footsteps and stuff from outside and whatnot, and you know the the calming of the room, he then says, "Don't think of me as ungrateful for the way events have unfolded. However." And he kind of like puts the ring back on his finger. He kind of like clenches his fist and like relaxes it and stuff. You can understand my reluctance to dismiss what was said before between us. Uh, it would seem that it's been dismissed for you. And I'll, I'll nod towards where the shot of the crown, um, throne was. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably still on the table, right? I think. Um, yeah, don't think that's her legs and walked away yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anything is possible. It's why is it a mimic? Yeah, this is it. So why don't you see things like yet? Um, <laughs> so it kind of like slowly like nods, like resigned, and uh, he looks at the the kind of the shard and he says, "Yes, no doubt the." Dragons are aware of the damage done, which means I am forced to act regardless of my people's safety, unfortunately. I am now in a particularly difficult situation. There has been an attack on my life, and I have used to thank for mitigating that attempt. And he kind of like looks over a Bastille and kind of nods mm. and says, Are you of the same conviction as before? To me, the pressing matter right now would be uh, the question of who would want you dead? Hmm. Why would this happen? It's like slowly nodding. I realised I was doing that on this side and nobody can see that. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> yeah, we're not using cameras. Yep. Why is, why is the light on? Oh, no. Um, and he... Uh... <laughs> kind of slowly nods and he says this has been playing on my mind too unfortunately my my list of enemies none would be so bold to take action in my own throne room I would have thought there are some with these this ability to come to mind directly of course, both the elf queen and again looks at a uh, Ketleth, and then they sort uh, of flinch at that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then a, uh, and then the 
Wizard King Magna. And he kind of just like draws his eyes off the rest of the group. And then uh, he says, um, he kind of like walks himself towards the the table with all the stuff lying over it. He kind of like picks up the chunk of throne, as it were, and kind of just looks at it, kind of like turning it over in his hand. Do you have any more information regarding this assassin? And he sets the chunk back down <coughs> very kind of heavily to the point where it probably echoes a bit in the room. Um, well, it's no love lost to me if you get wrecked. So I'll, I'll kind of look at, <coughs> look at Arya and Hitler. Well, I would straight up just be like telling the truth because, oh, yeah. you know, my queen, my liege, my oh. whatever, um, queen? you know, oh, okay. queen, yeah. Um, I feel like if he's leaning more towards her being the suspect of this attack, I would be a possible target of imprisonment and stuff, and I really don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'll like, I'll step forward and be like, it, it, Your Majesty, um, we do know who the assassin is um but when we saw him he was a very young boy not this assassin older person that we've seen today and he was in king douche i mean um (laughs) he's in the king's possession he he stole him as it were so can yeah. you roll a persuade with advantage for me? Oh, Help if I machine. Just guess at numbers, right? Yeah, no. Uh, I roll that. There you go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good roll. Yeah, I I would take that. No, I said I roll that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, roll for her. Advantage. What was it? Perception or uh, persuade for me? Persuade. Yeah, sorry. with advantage because it's. Oh, no. It's not like he wants. Um, yes. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm done now, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> thing. And um, yeah, he kind of just he sits and kind of mulls over and um, he says, "What is the nature of your acquaintance with this manling?" That you know. We were his carers, as such. We were looking after him. And that's... Well, failed at that. Um, Failed in what way? Well, he was stolen from us. Failed to care for him. Failed to protect him. Yeah, that's the one. I mean, I failed to care throughout the entire thing, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I was his favourite. <laughs> the most concern you've ever shown for him was the... Well, clearly it must have been him, though, because if it's not, then you might blame the Queen, and then it might come back and bite me in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> <pretty good. laughs> And uh, he sits there, uh, like, against the, the table. It's possibly the first time you've seen him kind of, like, take some kind of respite of any kind. Um that isn't just sitting on his throne. And uh, he says, So, if this is indeed true, it means the Wizard King wishes me dead. It would appear. He's kind of just like nodding to himself. Have you uh, done anything recently to really. What is it? Not? It'd be worth <laughs> noting that Celeste also though, considered this manling to be important. Mm. And what way we don't know. Yeah. I mean, have you ever heard of the Black Fang Spear, Your Highness? <laughs> and he kind of looks at you and he says, No, I have not. What is this you speak of? Uh, it was uh, just what he was called, is called. We were told it is a weapon. It's what he put through you. It kind of like absentmindedly touches like his chest, um, and then kind of like clasps his hand and starts like fiddling with like one of the rings on his fingers again. 
and he, he looks up at the group and he says and your allegiance to the king and he kind of just looks at everyone I just sort of give him a I, I laugh really? bitterly yeah there's just laugh <laughs> to... laugh it off yeah. there's no. not my king there is none it's kind of like good good are we to believe that the events that brought you to me seeking my help are unrelated to this attempt on my life? Well, of course. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Says the guy that's just joined them. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh. I'll follow up with um, as you as you saw when we first met. My lady's magic has no hold in your throne room. What the, what happened in there was completely out of our control. Magic's far beyond us. Kind okay, of like again, nodding to himself, kind of like almost muttering, right, as if he's trying to like process a bunch of things that are going on in his head. And then uh, he kind of like stands up against Luke, like instead of leaning on the uh, the big desk, and he says, "And your plans to the north, do they hold?" Hmm. Uh. Technically, mm. we've not really discussed anything since this happened, but okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Because if the wizard king, uh, sorry, the dwarf king was able to send enough down south, we might be willing to look elsewhere. Yeah, you could, yeah, ask him, I could be like, it all depends on what you're willing to do for us. So, that's a good idea. I mean, I feel like this was covered in the first conversation, though. He did say, like, yeah. I will send troops south so long as you just don't go north to the dragons or don't mess with yeah. dragons at all is literally the original deal. Um, yeah, but now the dragons are coming either way, in his mind. Yeah, I mean, he seems to believe the throne was the only thing stopping that. I mean... So, <clears throat> if I understood correctly, like, the fact that the... Is he basically saying that his pact with the dragons is now broken? Or yeah. What, 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 he's, not, he's not elaborated, really, on what he's thinking. Okay, so I'm... I'm I'm okay to be kind of confused about it. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. I thought it was just me. Okay. Mostly he just seems to think that um, the dragons will be aware the throne is broken. Whether they know how might not matter to the fact that it was, considering that was like symbolic to the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the assumptions that obviously Bastille might be running on. Uh... I'll, I'll look around us, and I'll, we're in Dondrabella's room. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, I'll be honest, we came here for a purpose. We, we, <clears throat> we're willing to take this venture with the dragons as far as it, as far as it has to go. And we're willing to see it to the end. Um, and I mean, we, we were here in the first place to perhaps have Dondrabella along with us. Um, and do the best job we possibly can. I see. And what purpose do you have with my master lore keeper? Uh, well, your knowledge of dragons master, is boundless. Master dragons, yeah. yeah. She's an absolute expert. And perhaps you'd agree that with her. Um, uh, her presence guarantees the success of almost any venture. He's kind of like, again, just kind of like nodding away to himself as if just acknowledging, like, physically that he is, like, still there, you know? And, um. Oh, right. And he's. Like, uh, dissociated. It's more just he's, he's got a lot to process, right? I am. Um, mm. So he's just kind of like, you know, I have heard you it's speak. Help. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's. Yeah. It is just one of those kind of, I'm here, I'm listening, but I'm thinking at the same time. Um. <laughs> 
how much of that's true is really debatable. And he says, um, so you wish to pursue these dragons along with my master lorekeeper and you hope that this adventure will lead to some modicum of control over the engine of destruction. Am I correct in this? Oh, oh shit, this is such a Crumbar moment. I, I wish he was there. <laughs> Dead. Crumbar's in the corner netting. <laughs> One shot. Just trying to get all those plot That's threads together. I actually forgot who the machine of destruction was. The engine of destruction is the red dragon. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. That's okay. Why don't you just go? It's me. It's actually just a stapler, but people keep using it wrong. <laughs> but anyway, carry on. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, honestly, I don't feel like it's my place to respond to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I'd say something on the lines of basically that we were doing this as part of a mission, but this may have changed our orders. Because the thing is, right, we don't know if his elite uh, alliance with the dragons is kaput, done, whatever. Because that would make it, I think, free for all to try to make an alliance with the dragon of our own. Mm -hmm. I guess, I hope. But again, well, like, what what is your plan, though? I think, like, he's saying, right, okay, so I've kind of run out of a lot of options here, but, like, what is your plan when, like, you know, like, is it, is it really just go to you know, the dangerous north cold place, mm. hope to find the white hope that they listen to you, hope you've got enough clout of some kind to trade yeah. that they're gonna then impose their will over one of their like air quote siblings, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh... <laughs> that you put it that way, there's a lot of ifs and, and maybes there and, and you know, unknowns in that equation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. But um I did not need to be reminded of that. Um <laughs> Yeah. Is is Dondra Bella's um like book, her field book in the room with us still? Uh, it's probably under the like under a pile of books on the table, yeah. Well. Am I gonna whip her diary out in front of me? Hmm. Rude. Uh okay. Breach, what what do you think? You're I'm not particularly smart or char charismatic, but I don't want to have this conversation with I think none of us really are, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. Shit. You're, you're the wise one. I'm we so need you, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What's the... What about, uh, what's, what's the feel from that particular... Uh, question then like how are folks say uh, like what is the desired outcome from this conversation I think it's probably a good thing to think about for your characters right because mm -hmm. like what is the goal here is it to be imprisoned by the dwarf king and have some kind of dwarf great escape adventure is it um... <laughs> yeah that would not work out very well so but then again we probably aren't very good liars either to tell them no no we've changed our plans we're not gonna go to the dragons and then pull <laughs> go to the dragons you know um yeah right and he I might have a chance the best to, way to get out of this scott free would try to um would, would be to 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 say basically that 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 like, I don't know how much we told him about how we get our, our, our missions and what who guides our steps and in whose service we actually are. But, like, for all I know, like, there might be a, a weird vision somebody has that tells us what to go next. Or Celeste might pop up and be like, you idiots, you're not being useful there. Go 
X location. Oh, yeah. so um, I was going to say, yes, Celeste's yeah. good at that though, isn't she, right? Turning up and telling us exactly what you need to do. Exactly, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is to her not tell him exactly what he almost got us in prison does in prison for uh if he's not gonna help us with the dragons then maybe not tell him that we're still considering the dragon path if Too we late. are still considering the dragon path mm. i know but I that's kind of what know, he's I asking know. you right he's saying is this still the path before you you know go f yeah but brave the if north we say find yes, the way you can just lock us up Um, like nature, there's not a lot of nature in the in in the jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I know what I want to say, but I'll I'll say um, I will fish out the book, and I'll flick to the page where Dondra Villa drew the the white dragon, the king, mm -hmm. and I'll say. We intend to draft a plan using all of Dondra Bella's wisdom. This is her true passion. I don't know if you know that about your law master. This is where her heart lies. Uh, and we intend to develop a comprehensive plan for understanding the fr uh, not the Frozen King, so the Winter King, the Winter King, uh, and leveraging that to make a. a a pact similar to the one your ancestors made over the throne. Then I ask again, what do you have that would sway the Winter King? Well, it is currently our purpose to to find something adequate. Perhaps you could aid us with that. And shakes his head and says, anything I would have of value to the dragons will be used to secure the dwarven safety once again. You can understand this, given that the peace has been broken. I wanted <coughs> to say shattered, but I didn't. Just so you know. <laughs> Mm. You might be able to match anything that you've got, though. Have something superficial, symbolic. The chair. And there is his eyes. And he says, If you are able to present me with such a thing, I will consider this for you as a group going off to negotiate with dragons. It what would you recommend would be good enough for it then? Like I look at you and says, "If I knew this, I would not need to speak to you. I would mm. already have my people working on this. Unfortunately, this is not something that I am currently in possession of. Unfortunately. So currently, you don't have any way to stop uh, make peace with the dragon." Oh. As of yet, no. No. So in which case, so you're in trouble, and anything we can do to get the dragon away from here would be beneficial to you. I can't remember. Did he ever tell us what, like, he gave the dragon to make peace with it the first time? No, no it wasn't him. That was like you know, yeah. well, great, great, great grand. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. In that case, I'll like ask out loud say um out of curiosity your highness what was it that your ancestors gave the dragons to secure the agreement the first time round is it known is it somehow kept in in your like i want to say history books but that that sounds very silly um <laughs> Is it kept in, in your records, you know, details of, of whatever secured the alliance the first time round? Yes, it is. 
It is a matter of some sensitivity, however. And it kind of looks at like Reach and Crumbar and yeah. everybody else. Uh, Crumbar still knitting away in the corner. Yeah, all those plot threads need tied together somehow. And then, uh, <laughs> then he looks over at Bastiel, uh, kind of like finally, and he says, If the process could have been repeated so easily, it would have been the first actions I pursued. Unfortunately, the item in question was... is un -re irreplaceable, you could say. I kind of like make that, that move, you know, people make with their hands when mm. you kind of expect pe other people to like, say more. Mm -hmm. So that's what Ari will be doing, kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, more please, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, please, King, elaborate some more. And he says, unfortunately, that would be a dead end as far as negotiations would go. The, um... And he kind of just stops his thought process and then just, like, walks further into the library. Like, mm -hmm. just past the entire group and just kind of, like, half marches his way down through the shelves. <laughs> what do you do in the meantime, as he's just buggered off, technically? In my head, I kind of want to slap him, but obviously I'm not going to do it. Um... <laughs> Imagine. Uh, <laughs> it just falls over again. <laughs> Probably just loud enough. I slap him, not, uh, mm. you know, fireball uh, him. There's a difference. <laughs> Probably just loud enough that he can hear from wherever he's gone. I'll walk a little bit if, he ha if I have to get within earshot. I'll say, as long as packs are being broken, Don Jabella seems to think we've incurred Hella's wrath. And um, you see him marching back with like a book under his arm. Um, again, his steps are relatively like you know measured as he's walking, and then mm. he kind of looks at you and kind of like nods, like does that thing where he stands next to you, stops, nods, and then kind of carries on and dumps the book on the uh, the mm. desk. And he says, "Yes, I was advised that could be an issue if my soul was indeed claimed by." Hella. However, that would be my burden to bear from now on. Hmm. Not something you need to concern yourself with. You did admirably by your former king. A uh, kind of nod bow type thing with the hands pressed together. Yeah, and he's he's pretty happy with that. I am kind of like nods at that. And then he starts like pouring through this book. It's a very like delicate looking book, this one. Um, big kind of tome, just full of like loose pages that have all kind of just been kind of bound together. And um, he he starts flicking through towards like near the kind of the end of the book. And he says, this was written by my grandfather's grandfather. And indeed it says, The greatest creation between dragons and dwarves was given to the Winter King in a, an attempt to appease the might and appetite. And then he, he kind of like slings the book around and shows you, and it's like the doodling of like. A fairly bitchin' looking hammer. I was gonna say, if it was the fucking friendship of magic something, I, I'd have just flipped it. <laughs> the magic of friendship. <laughs> it's a drawing of all their hands, and there's a, a circle that connects all the hands with marker <laughs> pen. <laughs> oh, watery anime eyes. See, mm -hmm. I almost wish that it had been, like, written about and not a photo, because... I totally had in my head a moment where I get closer and I try to peek over her shoulder and then I'm like, oh, like the music the swells and, like... and you look at the book and go, oh, I can't read this. <laughs> <laughs> like that's exactly how it happened in my head, but then you just have to say that there's a photo. I, actually, something did come to mind before you said it was a hammer, and that was something forced by dwarves, 
with like you know righteous dragonfire can i can i check the drawing to see if there's particularly like um charge or magically unique and it kind of alludes to being having that kind of <clears throat> craftsmanship behind it i mean it is, a, just it is a picture and you could just read the page if you wanted Oh, there's writing, okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it is, yeah. It's a book detailing, the, you know, the entire, um, I guess, Ooh. musings of the person that wrote it regarding the events. Uh, okay. Why don't you give me some investigate? Uh, who else can speak Dwarven here? Me. Cool. Think. Do you want to help him and you can give him advantage for that? Yay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Very and nice you can cool. look over too. Yep, cool. Yep, three of you can pour over it, and then Ari can be like, "I'll wait for the cliff notes." Let's <laughs> <laughs> forget where are you? Bam! Shit, plus zero. But it's an eighteen, nobody. Eighteen. <coughs> yes. It's all right. I am. Um, it's really all right, in fact. So yeah, you. You look over the. The kind of the detail, in the book. And it's all kind of written in like kind of golden ink, and especially like the like clearly somebody's taken a long time to like detail the image of this hammer. And that reminds me of home. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, yeah, it goes on about how uh, Odyssea himself was in agreement that the uh, war between dragons and dwarves was a waste of life in general and while it was not his place to kind of step in to any like you know to interfere he was willing to be invited in to assist in the process i am um, mm. the artifact in question was a hammer forged by odyssea and the dwarf king of that time and yeah. it was known as the Astral Hammer. Oh, does it, oh. Is it made from a meteor? Yeah, what? Meteor Hammer! Uh, Isn't this the thing? No, it's um, it doesn't say it's made by meteor or anything, it, it was just forged by Odyssea, aka the Great Gold Worm. Hmm. Oh! Yep, yep. Yeah, thank you for that. My dots weren't connecting. That's okay. So yeah. And this was what was gifted as some kind of, you know, look, we we put a lot of time into this thing and it was purely for you. And then return the uh, the Winter King like created the throne that would never melt. And that was like the kind of lasting symbology between the two. And it appeased the Winter King. This is like the kind of, you know, the postscript, as it were. But it's just assumed that the Winter King feels like a Odyssea essentially bowed to her by doing this, right? Because it's arguable who would win in a fight between Odyssea and the Winter King, except for the fact that one is called like a god, you know? The other yeah. is not. So. You could say it's pretty obvious who would win in a fight. Yeah. But, but then one is here and one is not as well. Correct, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and seems to be a dragon of her word, right? She hasn't pestered the dwarf since. Um, and got, like, you know, a hammer made by Odyssea, right? Fundamentally. She's a bit plain Thor. Yeah, Bas yeah you know, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Way playing Thor, uh, and, uh, uh, killing frost giants or some shit, right? <laughs> Up in the north. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like that's a thing that clearly, obviously, besides us completely parodying her, the she was obviously appeased enough that the god dragon felt like he had to in some way supplicate himself, right? Enough to be like, yeah, I will work for you and labor for you to create this thing. Um, and that is oh, my okay. contribution towards the, the peace talks, because 
that is worth something when you could just have turned up and went, I'm the god dragon, stop this bullshit. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. True. The dwarf king of the time seems to believe it was more of an ego thing for the winter king. Like, yay, the god dragon bowed to me. Look how important I am. Um, but the uh, the more public tale of it is a uh, the aforementioned one, you know, the one where it's a uh, he could have stopped us by force, but showed he showed me respect, and thus, you know, that was worth me showing respect out, out of the entire thing, and my children won't die unnecessarily to like you know centuries old grudge for no reason. So an argument yeah. could be. Odyssea would be extremely grateful for the dragon to help at this time and would be would also, also want to try and uh, prevent any uh, any fights up north as well. So it's possible it could be redone. I mean the sentiment yes, the act no because you just don't have a god dragon currently do you use? Um, do they know that? I mean, we do. We just don't know where they've <laughs> left. Them. Yeah. I mean, we know one of those ones you can whistle and it'll yeah. tell you where it is. But... <laughs> if only you thought to tag him. Yeah. <laughs> just turned his mobile off. Did get him chipped or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Location data switched off. Yeah. Uh, so the Dwarven King did bring his hammer with him. I'll ask. I'll nod towards it. And I'll say, well, it would seem that my brother doesn't seem to be doing his job here. Can would, you contribute... nice. <laughs> would you contribute him to our cause? And he kind of looks back at the hammer, where it stands, and he says, I think you misunderstand the uh, weight of all of this. The And he kind of like motions back to the book that you're all kind of leaning over. Uh, big golden hammer is going to be a bit, yeah, we got it. The hammer of a god versus the hammer of a king. There is a significant difference. Well, I happen to, I happen to have control over the forge myself, via my leg. And I think that perhaps it could be a strong component to. A grand project. Okay, I just... So, his eyes got, like, gonna go slightly wider, as if he's now hoping you will elaborate, but not saying anything, you know? I am... Um... But he's clearly, like, <laughs> you know... He's doing that thing where he's thinking quite a bit, still, about everything. Because he's obviously toying with the idea of just throwing his all in a dungeon, right? You know this from, like, before he got stabbed. <laughs> um, and... He's now obviously aware that maybe that won't make a difference, right? Because let's face it, as we have had the conversation with him now, it seems like the dragons might just come anyway, right? Depending on how they take the shattering of the throne. Because, oh. quite yeah. f quite frankly, that just looks like, you know, here's a gift from the, k the Winter King. It's never melt ice. Somebody broke it. Which kind of implies <laughs> they think they're better than the Winter King. Right? Symbolically. So, that's an insult. Oh no. So, you know. Mm. Maybe all that's playing through his head, like, how long do I have before dragons from the north and demons from the south consume us all? Is it worth yeah. just, like, being the last survivors, even if we die in the end? You know? Dot dot dot. Probably lots of stuff going through the guy's head. I am... Um, and right yeah. now, a lot of your, your speeches to him are, but maybe we could do something. And he goes, yes, what's the thing you could do? And you go, that's it. Something. And he's like, yeah, but I, I need the blanks filled in. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up the clump of ice and kind of size it up. I'll hold it. I'll kind of scope it out how it kind of sits against the hammer. And I'll say, uh, perhaps we reforge the pact. Ourselves. He narrows his eyes. His nose twitches, which makes it look like his entire beard shuffle a bit. 
<laughs> Star <laughs> dragons. I hate them. <laughs> Cox's <is> shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> so, he stands there and he says, You have spoke many things about reforging this pact. Assuming again hmm. you have something of worth to the King of Winter. Let's see. The favour of a my lady of fate, the hammer of the Dwarven King. I'm sure we could find something else to contribute. Your lady of fate seems to have left you without direction, unfortunately. If she has so much power, why is she not assisting with these southern devils? She works in a mysterious way. He laughs at that. Just like, ah, you know, very you know, dismissively. Uh, I don't want to tick him off, but he, she basically wrestled her his soul back from Hela. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there is definitely religiously significant weight or divine significant weight for you in that act 100% yeah um, but he, keep in mind he still believes he might have to face a price for that with Hela regardless um, you know yeah um. like dodging your taxes the first time doesn't mean you get to pay it double next time without like maybe a jail <laughs> sentence you know <laughs> you know not to Parody that, but yeah. <laughs> so repossess his, mm -hmm. his throne, his couch. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> What's everybody else's thoughts on this then, in this particular like tense moment with the king? Because like there is there's a bunch of good options, right? Like there is trying, you know, find something worthy or appeasing enough to a dragon, or I mean, there's always the chance that you could just go kill the white dragon, right? And take the hammer after surviving the trip to the Palace of Mirrors and the trip through the Palace of Mirrors. Mm. So that's one option. Well, <laughs> yeah. Any other option possibly would be worth exploring. What do you guys think about um, well, assembling well, an even grander hammer? Well, all a new gesture. I, I'm trying to think. Uh, Princess just story would be happy about any help down south, as well as the great gold worm, uh, possibly even the wizard king. Although that's probably not a good one to measure. <laughs> yeah. uh, so there'd be a lot more people happier. So the the prize for it could be a lot greater than just one hammer, for example. Uh, but what would that mm. be? I don't know. A nice shield to go with it. Uh, matching <laughs> shield. Uh, a fetching red velvet cape that flutters yeah. in the wind dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. A lanyard. A lanyard, yeah. The... <laughs> Early adopters package. Yep. Um, yeah. Her name in the credits of the Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not. The, it's not the worst angle though, right? Because yeah, you're right. Like. Oh, who in the world would like the world not being run over by demons? Possibly most people, right? Most, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, 100%. If I was in that world, I'd be all for that, quite frankly. Yeah, like, we, we could, like, assemble something like a like a treaty. Like, you know, a piece from each faction. An extension to the uh, a temple for the her, uh, her palace. So the matches each of the factions she's helped to save or something like that or mm. uh, this oh yeah from... she could fill in for like multiple places speak yeah. for multiple factions yeah. it's not the worst idea is it yeah. Yeah, it's, so... it'd be actually quite nice and it's yeah it means a lot of half the world at least is mm. bowed down and said thank you to her uh -huh. yeah, it's... it's big yeah right god yeah. thanked yeah. her and then the world thanked her yeah it's all right <laughs> mm-hmm Killeth is like the dirty elf business one, I guess, if Preacher's saying this out loud. I guess I'll probably look to her and be like, is any of this even remotely possible? Getting a piece of that kingdom. 
Uh, I just missed the, like, the last few minutes. I had to go get some tissue. My nose is running. <laughs> Basically, so... yeah. We, we came up with the idea that like maybe if we got a piece, uh, like a symbol from mm. each faction, we could kind of make a treaty in like the hammer form or item form. Like make something that shows that all of the factions are willing to collaborate for the okay. greater good. And we need that would mean we need a piece from the Elven Queen. I mean, if that sounds yeah, reasonable yeah. to you. Maybe it would be even well. more symbolic if it was a shield. Hmm. <laughs> Do any of you have like something from there? Like from her? No, yeah. we've we never been to her. Yeah, no, we haven't. And just like, but it would take us all on to a whole bigger, uh, yeah, a uh, thing in a quest. Yeah. Keep in mind, though, right? So, let's say you did, in theory, right, decide to go visit all these other people, such as the Elf Queen, right? Because that's at least a very ambiguous target you can pick straight away. Because mm, yeah. obviously, the Wizard King's maybe a no go, um, mm. just based on possible current political issues. But then, but just story it if she's feeling better is well, a big could... possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, might even help speak on your behalf, right? She's pretty happy with the party as is, yeah. right? So she might yeah. even speak on behalf of uh, you guys for MDLs, right? Uh, yeah. She's well liked by most people, so that's the thing. The problem is she is missing, so that's something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, either way, we have to get the Black Fang spirit back. Anyway, right? I mean, maybe after Celeste is done with it, we can hand it over. Are you going to give it to the the Winter King? I don't know. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> Giving the Black Fang spear to the Wizard King or the Winter King? It's probably said. a bad idea. Winter yeah, right, right, right. The thing is already got it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it seems like Magna has the spear. And it also seems oh. like a so. I don't know if they've told you much about this, but like in their initial kind of like interactions with Celeste, she basically said, "This thing's too dangerous to leave in the wrong hands. Bring it to me." Uh, oh. Yeah, and she she kind of said, "When you are in possession of it, I will appear." And yeah, yeah. she never perhaps appeared. No. She that's did what made me think that perhaps, um, perhaps he wasn't really like the weapon. Yet, you know, I'm just mostly like, I'm highlighting this because be kid, I don't think yeah. she'll then give it up if she has it, right? I see, because that would then just hand what she thinks that there's like a world ending weapon over to an evil dragon who's in charge of the evil dragons. Yeah, I keep having it in my head that this is like a bummed out a dragon that's actually would be a good overseer to just hold on to it. Like, mm -hmm. like, no real fire in her heart left. Like, <laughs> the thing is, right, the the Winter King has maintained peace with dwarves this entire time. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that, you know, if somebody else has came by, she hasn't wrecked them, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's just that that happens to be fairly close to, you know, where she likes to roam and claim as her own, and obviously dwarves got a bit trigger-happy with their uh, crossbows. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe it's just a case of they dig it into a kerfuffle, as it were. But mm -hmm. the idea that Celeste would give up the Blackfang Spirit to the Winter King would possibly sit ill with the people that had the initial conversation with Celeste. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not to say that like these things... like It is not the worst plan I've ever heard, put it that way. Um, is the idea of making some <laughs> kind of you know united front to appease the Winter King to make peace, but then while talking to all the other factions, you could then try and get them to send support south, right? Mm. That really isn't yeah, like, like, hello Queenie, can I have two things please? One, a gift good enough for the King of Winter, and two, an army to help fight the demons in the south? Okay, thanks. Love your work, <laughs> by the way. Also, did you kill the Dwarf King? <laughs> like, oh, that's a big ask, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then plus, if she does give something to contribute to saving the dwarves from dragons destroying them, then maybe the dwarves and the elves get along. 
Mm. That's like a huge realm changing right. thing. Mm. Don't need no stupid love story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make it happen no matter what. <laughs> Imagine you'd actually just went on that goddamn date, though, Sophie, like as Kitless. <laughs> this entire game would have been a different... <laughs> the demons oh. just went, this land's too full of love, it sickens us, we have to leave. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm... What do you guys even want to do, though? Like, where do you want to take it? Because I just threw that thing, I did, that idea right there. No, I can forge stuff. With magic. Me. Yeah, like, would, would, how do you want to resolve this? Now, keep in mind, he is trying to compare his abilities with the god dragon's ability to forge something. Well, so can, let's just weigh up I, that. Like, you know, in the scale of. Yeah. yeah. You, well, not, you could really add like, to it, you couldn't do the whole thing. Yeah. I just... couldn't make the Black Frank Spear, but I could duct tape it to another cool thing. <laughs> 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 you actually thought, though, the Black Frank Spear is the boy, by the way, and not what he chucked. Uh huh. Yeah. And also what he chucked was probably a, a figment of his imagination as well. That's, which is quite real and deadly. Mm. Yeah, if yeah. has experienced this for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> when Celeste stepped in and just said, open your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Quite luckily. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, like that's a valid question though between like um, the party members then. Who do you think in the world would be the most a likely to help? So I think we know just stories on the list, but currently we don't know what's happened to her yet. No. Um, but just stories number one on the list. If we knew yeah. what happened to her, mm. yeah, I'll put that one down in my wee, my wee list of yeah. um, the Elf Queen knows probably a good high second, really. Uh, okay, so I'll put down just Doria. And I assume then... we haven't got a zombie world, a zombie city down south a bit then that would be in the top five as well I don't know who's the leaders of that I what Glitterhagen Glitterhagen yeah <laughs> the <Yeah>. wizard king <laughs> yeah, right, okay, yeah. like yeah. it is primarily the city that the like most of the trade happens though right so it's like the financial capital of like the kingdom as it were yeah so rules are a wee bit more relaxed to allow for money yeah. yeah like right. it's very much a case of this is where dwarfs make and spend money um because Anvil's like the Dwarven version of Glitterhagen, right? And Glitterhagen's like the kingdom version of Anvil. Um, it's the, you know, the twin cities that are... Look, we don't hate each other. Symbology. <laughs> and obviously, possibly mm. zombie invasion. But you haven't heard anything about that, so that couldn't possibly have happened. Yeah. As a city that's dead, you get plenty of news coming out of that <laughs> to tell you that that's happened, yes. <laughs> yep, true that. Plus, you know that your um, your order hall was shut down there, like all the order halls, it seems. Yeah, um, yeah. But they all do seem connected. Hmm. So if you needed to halt the places, you know. And you know that the kingdom in the forge has a connection to the citadel in the south, magically. Because remember, Zedreka was like, so, I could use it, but who knows what will happen if you uh, step so through. So I'm thinking Dwarven King's Hammer plus something from the Golden Treasury, which you guys could probably handle, I don't know. I think the problem uh, is there's nothing in the Golden Treasury. God, what? Well, since when? I thought there was this whole the, the Babylonian vault. Oh, it's empty. Like, I don't know what, maybe you're confusing the chat mean you had about Gilgamesh, the anime character that has, like, just, that possesses you, you every like, treasure in the world, but, like, the Golden Order ha are using, like, 100% of their resources currently fighting the demons, and you guys are the remainder of those resources. Oh, because, yeah, they just shelled out all that armor and stuff for the party. Uh, so good. Not only that, though, like, just... All of the best stuff will be in the hands of their best paladins at the breach, trying to save their former commander. You know? Hmm. Like. Former commander. Well, currently Zedrick is <laughs> the acting commander, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah commander, but yeah, unless he's dead. Yeah. No, act, acting high commander, you know, Zedrecka. That's That's how it works. 
See, I thought it was a whole kingdom and stuff where they have their own, like, customs and shit. I didn't know it was, like, the police. Uh, hmm. That kind of is. It's like, you know, a mini, like, you know, I think it's Vatican-esque is how I've described it in the past. Um, in the sense that their job, though, it's a big, massive, like, monk-like order, if you will. But it is just essentially a kind of force of so good. Vatican, that'd be brilliant okay. if you just get the Holy Grail. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is this when you get it and it's just that jug Crumber had? And it's like, wait, we had the Holy Grail? Crumber's like, of course we did. Glug. Yeah, not used the year at all. Yeah. Not used the day, not you. And knowing him, he would have drank out of it. Oh, dear. Now, the best thing, right? Now, the best thing about this is you probably do have something that is um, worth the white's attention. But he isn't here to offer it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The I, I did no. think no, mm. the hammer. Um, nope. Oh, whatever. Yeah. The sword. That thing. Yeah. The quill of the phoenix it's oh. called. Yes. We we don't want to give it a wish. I mean, what well, what could go wrong if you gave you know, King of the Evil Dragons a wish? I was <laughs> actually thinking that we could give it the product of the wish and right. not the wish itself. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. What it do you want? Yeah, we could do that. Right, we'll wish for that. But, yeah. <laughs> go back, done. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not the worst, it's right? Yeah. Well, actually, no, I don't know that at all. Also, wishes, you you ask for something if it's beyond the the first stage of the spell, remember? Do any of us in character know he's got a wish? Uh, probably yeah. not. Yeah, yeah I we don't. Think so, though, so, yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like the way Crumbar understands it as he has all the lost potential of his tribe to redistribute somewhere. And that is like the vagueness I gave him, you know? Okay, never mind then. I'm not even going to comment on the wish. Yeah, but it's uh, something that as players, you know, I don't mind just cataloguing assets, right? And being aware of what you have as a group. Um, but that is possibly one of the most powerful things you currently have or have ever had access to. Okay, I'll say this then. I don't think Celeste would even grant a wish for the dragon. So we could just hand it over and we probably can't even use it. But, yeah. Mm. Anyway, what were we in the middle of talking about with Dwarven King? Uh, <laughs> you, off there. you just were talking, and I'm assuming most of it was in character, about the idea of trying to like appease the other nations. Like the, the, yeah. the important oh, okay. people of the world. Um, Does he say anything in response to the Elven Queen collaboration as well? Uh, no, like I think I've left him kind of narratively out of it a bit, just so those Jews can ruminate a bit on it, right? Because if I do, I do this, right, bam, there, there's like the icon list of the world if it helps. So, yeah, like I drew it. Hmm. Oh, the Crusader Cru Knight. Yeah, Crusader Knight, Druid. We've, and the Prince of Shadows, we've not really had anything to do with at all. So I'll go through the list for you as well, right? So he's another Wizard King, that's Magna, everybody's favourite king. Oh, wait. Um, we have a few <laughs> of those now. By pain of death. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Definitely. You've got the Elf Queen, the, um, the Ambiguous herself, and then you've got Notorious uh, B.I.G., Dwarf King, right? <laughs> um, uh... And those, as you can see, are at the top of the list, seemingly for a reason, right? Um, but, yeah. Wizard King seems to be a no-go. Elf Queen, possibility. You do have, like, a full-blooded elf in your party, right? So, that's a thing. Granted, though, she was rebuilt by magic, so how does that work? Nobody knows. Um, Dwarf mm -hmm. King's obviously the one, like elf. the one that seems to be able to supply troops towards the south. Uh, Princess, who likes you guys, you like her, from what I can tell, and uh, most people like her, so yeah, really powerful magic. And she doesn't seem mm. to be on the side of her father, which is the Wizard King. That it seems to be a plus. Uh, missing in action, doesn't help. The Crusader Knight, you met her, her name was Andromeda. So, she was heading towards the Citadel with, you know, a gnome called Bang, and a, uh, you know, the... <laughs> The commander, the commander general of uh, the Dwarf King's army, you know, mm -hmm. on leave, as it were, from his services <laughs> uh, as he headed down south. That was Keel, Com General Commander Keel. Uh, so, he's met the Crusader Knight, and they seem to be at least concerned about the south 
as a trio. Um, the High Druid, you just have a druid in your party, that's about as far as that's been ex explored. Uh, the Great Gold Worm, mm, again, mysterious ways. Uh, but most of you are in some way tied to the Great Gold Worm, it seems. Uh, Prince of Shadows is like the Boogeyman, so, yep. Uh, prismatic Order, you have met the head of the Prismatic Order, uh, except Bastille again. Uh, they, in fact, sent you to the Citadel, and then the Citadel sent you up to uh, Claire Hagen. So the Prismatic Order are kind of trying to find out what the hell happened to Justoria, actually, but very low-key trying to suss that out, because, you know, let's not necessarily give up the fact that we don't know what happened to our mighty princess leader. Mm. And uh, the five are the five dragons, right? The white, the black, the blue, the red, the green. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So those are probably the most influential people in the world, or powerful entities in the world, um, barring the massive demon invasion. Probably a whole trek to actually physically reach each one. It would literally go into the corners of the world. So what can we do from where we are now? I mean... That trek we... probably isn't as big as this sounds though, because yeah, there's a portal here and there's probably a portal at the Elf Queen's place. And mm. Although when or not we could use it, it's debatable. From Dwarf to Elf, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Mm. Yeah. Portal, yeah. I don't know about a portal. No, so there, like what Reach is talking about is in the Golden Order Citadel, right, which is south, right, south of the map, mm. that has a portal that is connected to the Dwarf King, because their acting high commander said that she could send you there, but she doesn't know if you would reach there or if you would be treated well, because that would be like using somebody else's Stargate without permission, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You may have had a shield on. Yeah, yeah. 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 The iris yeah. is closed. Yeah. Boom, boom. Yep. <laughs> So that is yeah, why okay. she didn't do right. that because she's like, yeah, I can't do that. Like that's just an act of war technically um, with the dwarf, so let's not do that. Um, but she sent the gang to Glitterhagen's Order Hall for the Golden Order because all the main cities have an Order Hall. Uh, there isn't one within the Elf Queen's Forest, though. The like the elves deal with the forest, right? The like the queens right. would. Um, so that would need to be like travel close by. And there is a city. Uh, see where the Koru Straits are, which is here. If you just move all that mm -hmm. out of the way. Like, there is a city on the edge there um, called High Rock. It's kind of like where all the old money of the kingdom is. Oh, yeah. It's technically where, like, Eric's family were originally from before they moved to uh, Glitterhagen. And, yeah, like, they are south of the Queenswood. So you could order a hall to there. <coughs> and then... But you obviously need somebody to activate the Order Hall stuff for you, so you might need the Dwarf King to shunt you to the Golden Order to get Zedreka to shunt you over to, say, High Rock, for example. That would get you across the world really quickly. Yeah, alright, cool. Alright, that's very doable. Yeah, it's almost like the Golden Order decided if we're going to police the world full of demons, we need to get around quickly. Um, also, the Prismatic Order seem to be able to go where the hell they want, so shrug you know they are the magic police of the world whereas the you know golden paladins are the anti-demon police yeah okay okay mm. right okay this literally needs to be diagrammed because there's so many steps but <laughs> uh <clears throat> And the work they say will we'll do a flow a spreadsheet for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, just, it okay. depends. Like, what do you, what is it you need to map out? Right. Talk me through your your thought process here. So, you got the big arrow, which is us, and then it points to the white dragon's favor, and then on the way, you got. So acquiring I think you component. want to go back a couple of steps, right? Stop demons at the abyss. Then a line. Yeah. Burn all demons using the red dragon. Then a line. Get the white to make the red dragon help. Then a line. Convince the white yeah. to make the red dragon help. Then a line. And then it's the big <laughs> circle. And it's got everybody else's name saying, 
appease the white. Yeah. So can exactly. you it's a bigger, it's a bigger step. Um, because ultimately this isn't about appeasing the white, it's about getting the red to go burn all the demons so the paladins can go in and try and help their former boss, right? Yeah. And there's all these nuances too, like the elves and the dwarves getting along from that. Now keep in mind, there is no official war between the elves and the dwarves. They just hate each other. Mm, like, I wouldn't say. Like, I mean, I don't think, like, Kitlis would elf. Does Kitlis hate all the dwarves? I don't think so. She might, but I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. I mean, I come across some obnoxious, annoying dwarves, but you know, <laughs> you get that in every race. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, Bastille, she would say that she's obviously working for a dark elf, you know, called Zadreka at the Golden Order, who sent you here to assassinate your right. king, right? Dun, 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 oh, dun. Yeah. don't even. <laughs> We've already discovered that the last time we were played anyway. <laughs> Been like, yep, it's all coming together. Sabotage. <laughs> uh, also, you have a druid, right? So the high druid's assumedly contactable at any point. You can commune with nature, right? And also the crusader knight and uh, successful the great gold worm would be as well because they are both down in the same place. Assuming everything's all, yeah. Well, right. we'll the Crusader Knight is assumedly down south, yeah, already. Yeah. yeah. So you don't really need to worry about Andromeda. Unless you and did if we it to else. Close the abyss and save the world, then we would hope the Great Gold Worm or whoever's next in charge would be there, uh, would appear. Uh, Gil. Uh. Yeah, like the next person to maybe, you know, try and yeah. keep order, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the Crusader Knight, just for everybody else's, like, kind of recollection. I mean, she was the head of the royal armies of Magna. So she used to work for the Wizard King. She used to be the head of the army. But yet she's, okay. went, she's went a wonder to go check out Hellholes and then hang out with a gnome the dwarf and head down south. It's a bit weird. If you're going to yeah. go travelling around the world, it's good to have your cook with you. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It's not that weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were good cook. Oh, mm. glorious. Just a sign of wealth, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, and then while we're at it, and we can we can just like ask the, these like icons themselves if they can contribute the same way the white we want the white to. We could just ask them to see if they care about doing something about this. Uh, now, now here's the thing: how many of these people do you think are pro the red? <sighs> hmm. I reckon yeah, the druid might be. So the druids. Another way it says the how ones many that are, are all for you know love oh, nature right. to like the the destruction dragon. Yeah, I don't. No, I mean the dragon is is nature incarnate. All of the dragons are. So what was that, Stu? Sorry, you had some thoughts on this as well. Nah, not really. It's okay. I was just thinking they're all pro the world still being alive. This is true. That's, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. So uh, they yeah. might be debatable by the means, but yeah. I think we can all understand that it, the dragon is like a freaking satellite laser, an orbital strike. Yeah, but nobody's wanting, nobody's wanting to admit that they have the satellite in orbit though, I think that's the problem. When everybody realises they launched the one satellite as a, a union effort. Um, okay, so if the plan is then, right, form the UN yes. to make the white bully the red into burning the demons, right? And then hopefully having all of the other resources of these like particular factions contributed south. Seems good, right? Definitely seems mm -hmm. like a, a good big plan. Yep. So um it's the first step. First step would be Like what do you have the most control over? I guess is the better way because you may as well deal with the strongest one first, right? And I don't mean the strongest of the icons or the factions or whatever. I mean the one you have the most clout with. Probably right now where we are with the Dwarven King. Right. So, what's his um price? A hammer. He has a hammer. Well, <laughs> technically, it's just peace with the dragons. I would think. Really. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. 
Because <laughs> oh, I thought you meant his please type. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a simple humble request, <laughs> right? <laughs> But, like, you know a lot about the dwarf king, right? A, he's worried about you having wrecked the peace with the dragons. Then the chair broke anyway. And then the peace seems like it's wrecked, according to, like, his, like, worries and concerns. Um, he's just told you that it took a god and his granddad's granddad to, like, create peace in the first place. And he is worried that it's going to go to shit now. And he doesn't necessarily want to vacate his troops if they are going to have to fend off the place against dragons. So, all considered valid. Also, he's got that thing about wanting to feed his people on the side as well. So that's also something that he might care more about now because he might have to stay underground longer, right? If dragons are more freely roaming. So, like, yeah, you might even see yeah. things like, like, if this escalates further with the dwarf situation, you might even cut Anvil off. Out of fear that it is a vulnerability, which would be like thousands and thousands of people mm -hmm. just left to it. So, are we calling phase one get the king's contribution to the pack and also aid him with the food thing? What do you want to do about that, Aya? Because this is all on you, like, this is your side. Sorry, everybody went robotic there, so I was... Yeah, she disconnected and reconnected for us. Oh. Yeah, but so it's you... disconnect and reconnect. It's okay. Do you uh... want to rephrase your question to her best deal? And we'll see what oh, sorry, were you talks. saying something towards me? <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you want to do about the food situation? Like, do you want to, do you want to hand that over? Do you want to just let them have the food now that they're pretty much on our side with the whole uh, collaborating thing? What do you want to do about At this point? Like, like there is. We. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no harm in very good for him so that he's. Uh, uh, <laughs> on our side. This is rough. I didn't know that we could get eggs, so I would uh, definitely yeah. do that. Has something just started updating on your side? Are you like a like a random Steam game or something's just decided to download all of a sudden? So, I no. don't think so. No, there wouldn't be anything because Steam's not on, to my knowledge. Oh, there you go. You're better now. Yeah, you're you're much better now. The only thing I've done is not just now, but in don't the past few minutes. Don't waste it. Just stick in character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't waste yeah, a good audio. <laughs> okay. okay. So. What's um, Arya's response to Bastille's, um theories about your abilities to help the king with the food problem? Because in Bastille's head, I don't know why this is, he seems to think the king's on his side. Well, Let's see about what? I think either way, we should try to leave things in a good place with him while we try to go from well, strength to less strength and essentially collect the blessing of everybody it's more luck based goals, yeah sorry, I didn't quite understand that less reliable goals meaning uh, there's no yeah. guarantee he'll, you'll be able to get MD to help, is what you're saying yeah which is true, though, for your conversation with the Dwarf King, right? Like, mm -hmm. you just came with nothing, but you just learned how you could help him. Right? And even without needing to say, we'll help grow your food if you send us troops, he was willing to send you troops as long as he didn't fuck with dragons. The dragons have now been fucked with regardless. So... So either way, us helping him will be good, because no matter what happens... There is a a situation, a not so great situation, and he would greatly benefit from not having to worry about food for his people. Yeah, that's it. So. I think either way it would be a good idea. It would be a good thing to do. So um, I'll um, I'll, uh. I'll kind of be like looking towards him and be like, there is one thing that 
we can assist as it's likely that we'll be experiencing very interesting times no matter what happens henceforth. Um, okay, it looks up at you like, you know, they almost, oh, can I respond to um, it? About what we were talking about, your, your goals to be able to provide for your people um, without worrying about having to go to the surface. I think I may be able to help with that. I, um, I, I'm quite proficient with plants and, um, soil and making it a bit more fertile than it technically should be. It's so like I could just take that as our parting gift. I kind of, um... Just as like taking in what you said, and that you would give this gift freely. I'm kind of like surprised because kind of like, well, it looks like we're all going to be facing trouble sometimes. Might as well help relieve one worry for one of the factions. Mm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll pack up. Yeah, and you know, because I mentioned the hammer thing earlier, so in exchange for your contribution to our uniting of the realms. And exactly what contribution would you ask of me? I look at the hammer in the book, <laughs> the, the, the in the book, the drawing, and I look at my brother, the actual hammer in the room. And I'll say um, the the means to forge something worthy of a god. He looks and at I'll... his hammer and he says, "Unfortunately, your." And he looks at it, brother, and he says that with like you know all of the tone you can possibly infer. And he says, right. "Well, he's basically just a mute, like you know." You seem to consider it your brother. He doesn't. Um, and he says, uh, "You would try and appease a king with a rattle when they had a gift from a god." I cannot stress this folly enough. We would unite the realms, seek contribution from wherever we can. The elven queen, and you know, he had the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. He did. He was meta gaming as well. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh he just um looks at the hammer and he says No. Man I will be using this to defend my people when the door is knocked from its hinges. However and then uh, takes his crown off and just sits it like around the uh, chunk of like ice throne that's still sat there and he just kind of sits it around that and sits down and goes consider this me humbled before the dragons Holy he then just uh, summons his hammer to his hand and it goes there with a like, thud and a clunk that obviously echoes around the room he kind of turns on his heels and he kind of just walks out of the room as like oh. guards open the door. Whoa, dude, that is so badass. Did he just smash his crown? No. He gave it to her. He just, yeah, he just sat the crown on the table, just like around the big kind of chunk oh, of crystal shit. ice. Fucking hell! Hey. I thought you meant that he's smashing it and giving us one of the gems on it or something. But, but <laughs> no, wow, no, the, okay. the whole crown. Oh, okay. He's took his hammer sure. and he's left. <laughs> I look at everybody around me and I'm like, not it, as in I'm not the person that's mm -hmm. carrying that. I don't want to be responsible for that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take, I'll pick it up and I'll take extreme care of it. Cool. Yeah. I think as well, though, like, see from his point of view, right? I think who can blame the guy for looking at like the weapon that is likely to help him save his people or a crown? 
right? I was just playing oh, the whole yeah. angle that it didn't really save him when he got bodied. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, like the yeah. thing is though, there's a lot of futility about the situation for him, right? Like yeah. he's he's cur he? currently yeah. negotiating with people he was about to lock up that then resurrects him. He's like, right, so they saved me. So what? <laughs> yeah, he can't just let go of all his self defense yeah. and stuff. Yeah, he's not just gonna go right it's, cool. It's really funny because the next thing that was gonna come out of my mouth was going to be, okay, I'll make your plants, you know, thrive as a token of goodwill, and once we get the rest of them, we're gonna come back here and you're gonna give us your mm -hmm. sign. But he yeah. just went and did it. I was like, okay. Yeah, but that's because, really? so the conversation went along the lines of him asking you, you give this freely, and you saying yes, and then Bastille went, but not technically, actually you'd have to give us your hammer. <laughs> that's how that conversation went. <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of um, alone in the, uh, the library for a bit, and then... After like a couple of seconds or whatever, like Dondrabella awkwardly like just looks in the room and kind of like shuffles in. And she's like, well, um, you're still alive. Kind of just yeah. looks a bit shocked at the group. Surprises us as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of holding the crown like you would a frisbee. I'll just yeah. kind of gesture with it and be like, we have your king's blessing. Your peace tambourine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your brain. Um, oh. And he said, uh, sorry, she says, uh, Hey, I noticed that. Hmm. But for what? Um, so she didn't hear any of that, I guess. No, because uh, remember, she was outside the room, the doors were shut. Yeah. <coughs> She didn't make a game, only the king did. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll take the time to explain to her what uh, the, the plan now. She needed a plan before she joined us, and we, we literally have one. Yeah, but whether or not it's uh, going to be put to her in a way that makes her want to go is a different <laughs> question. So, uh, yeah. She looks expectantly as so, she's like slowly walking towards where her um, you know, desk yeah. is. She mm. waits because she's looking expectantly, waiting to find out, like, you know, what's the next thing he's about to hit her with. Okay. I um, mean, she literally never heard anything that happened, so she is literally like, So, what was that about? But she's not going to say, What was that about? Okay. Because you went, Look, he's he's contributed, and she's like, Cool, to, to what? <laughs> uh, so, your king explained to us that the dwarves originally forged a pact with the dragon by giving them a token from the great gold uh, we intend to create a token of equal or greater value through uniting the realms and acquiring a contribution from each oh, from many uh, faction leaders uh, to fabricate a gesture that will Perhaps convince the uh, the Winter King to aid us in defending the realm of the living. Huh. So you're not as dumb as you look. <laughs> Wink. And she pulls the uh, the book across the table, and she's looking at the page with a hammer on it. She goes. Oh, I. She starts just like at, I was really like flicking through the pages as if like skim reading it. So, um. Where to first? Uh. Okay, we've got. We, oh shit, we really need Crumba here. Because <laughs> like, he has this whole thing he has to handle. He has a wish. He has. His tribe stuff and, and his whole relationship with the dragon. She. Okay, well, are we going to make this decision where to first without him? 
You're gonna have to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. It's not to say it can't be readdressed later. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. First, after the Dwarven King would be. What, is the plan to be like a Guy Fox as well? Because now you have a crown, so you could then just slowly collect random limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a teddy bear for you, Winter King. Company on those lonely mountain oh, nights. <laughs> I mean, who's to say the Winter lost. King doesn't have a mate, though? Exactly, right? Yeah. So first, I guess... We're heading to the Elven Queen, are we? So, oh, wait, no, no. First, we get the Dwarven King to get us back in with the with the Drak. Yeah, back to the and Citadel. The, the Citadel. Mm -hmm. So, first step is we head back to the Citadel. From there, we use magical means to zip around the globe. Like legends. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So cool. Like legends. Um, well, I mean, to any order hall location. Yeah. Yeah. Which is doable. Yeah, no, that's a thing. Um, what about everybody else? What's everybody else's thoughts on that? Who replies to Bastille with um, agreement or amendments? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna stay quiet and just sort of see what the group go with. As my character would not really want to go back to the Elfin Kingdom. Oh, but, say that. Know. Yeah, okay. But it's one of those sort of necessary evils. So it's like if we all agree to go, then whatever. It's just Ooh. facing the family. There's also a, <laughs> so here's another thing as well, right, that Ketliff will understand. They can't get through the woods without an elven guide. Uh, and that elven guide needs to be welcomed in the in the Queen's Wood, otherwise the, the elves, like, people that don't have the favour of the Queen will be, like, you know, lost forever in the forest, you know? And that is pretty much by default any non-elf. So you need an elf to navigate, and then you also need... Um, but, like, there's nothing to say that you still can't have, you know, like, reluctance to go and voice that with the group. The only thing that's ever going to do is create conversation that may, in fact, develop character, you know? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, this could just turn into a heist where we try and avoid <laughs> anyone seeing us. Pink we'll Panther theme plays out. as you sneak between trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Maybe that's something uh, Kitlith should bring up just now then. When it's like, where to first? And then uh, Bastille sits and goes, hmm, the Elf Queen? Or back to the Citadel? Or, hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just sort of make a uh, noise when he says, like, the Elf Queen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an involuntary. Yeah. It's just, it happens. <laughs> I'm sorry, show Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Who put this rake here? <laughs> so offended. I hate Shai Shai Pop. Oh, I mean, I don't think he's meant to be a likeable character, yeah. but, you know. Uh-huh. That was a Sorry. funny comparison, though, but yeah, I can understand why you'd be upset by that. <laughs> well, I could see Kitty following Sunday by strapping herself to the underside of a car, though. Like, oh my god, I forgot <laughs> he did that, bloody. I can see that. Anyway, in this game though, yeah, so you make a, like an involuntary noise of um, disapproval when the Elf Queen's mentioned. I don't think Emily needs to roll to catch that, I feel like that's obvious enough that Emily can react to that. Uh, yeah, I'll say, well, Master Thief, uh, as long as you can find a way to get us an item from her, I'm happy with that either way. We don't have to talk to you anyway. Also, do you know her as a master thief? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. she steals everything. Have I and... stolen anything in your presence? I was going to oh, yeah. say. Oh, okay. And, oh, it's okay, you got the... And also, like, you just, like, pick loads of stuff up and, like, tore those pages out of the book. And <laughs> you pick that lock like no one's... <laughs> and also with the mimics. We all were, like, investigating in the room, turning it upside down. 
I reckon I would. And she's got a giant backpack full of stolen miscellaneous shit. <laughs> I would assume. Okay. Okay. Bit, bit of a leap, for sure. Okay. Yeah. No evidence at all. Uh, except <laughs> all the evidence. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I guess, um, how does uh, Kitlith respond to being called a master thief? A, it's a compliment, but B, it kind of calls you out a bit. <laughs> I, thought of, I thought of smirk a bit with, like, slight pride, but then it's like, oh, that's really not a good thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, by the way, is is the, um like, the stuff that you stole, is it is it a bag of holding situation where it doesn't look like a lot, or is it actually all there? No, it's all, all there. there. It's all oh. there. It's very <laughs> visible. <laughs> like Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm hench as fuck. Mm. <laughs> I need to find you a therapist. <laughs> or just a bag hey, of holding. Like... Right. <laughs> the therapist is gonna. Is yeah. gonna... <sighs> I was abandoned. I got hair in his shoes. Things from others like they took from me. The therapist ends <laughs> up in the bag. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, I've got stuff to do. I can't sit in a room, like, for like, an hour or two. It's like, I've got to just come with me. <laughs> Although this is possibly the most literal interpretation of seeing a therapist about your baggage I have ever seen. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, we'll put that bag down and we will go through each item. Like, why do you find this? Well, you see, I need it to, like, open crates with. It's like, but do you come across a lot of crates? No, but you never know. <laughs> but as soon as I do, if I don't have that, I'll kick myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's valid. Um, I kind of wish you'd took that brazier with you. God, that'd have been so funny lugging that around. Oh no, but well, that was very much <laughs> the weight limit. Yep. <sighs> oh dear. Been from Baz helmet. Mm. Maybe wouldn't have known. <laughs> the um, <laughs> just put it over his head. He's still ninety percent operational. <laughs> Poor Scott. Too easy a target when he's not here. Where is he? Uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's on his way somewhere. Oh, yeah. But yeah. So, I think um, yeah. Dunder Belly just kind of sits there and kind of like clears her throat a bit and she's like, I mean, it's going to have to be something mighty impressive if it's going to match up to the uh, Astral Hammer. Yeah. He knows their history very well, then. And she, she looks at the biggest. No, it's just written. <laughs> <laughs> Not <the> picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, she was looking at the picture as well. Sorry, my bad. I didn't get that. Yeah, no, she'd moved the book over to herself and she started just amulet, like, like skim reading it and looking over the pages. We're saying, so we're too first. And then that's when uh, Bastille said, hmm, Elf Green. And then we had the <laughs> <laughs> Sideshow Bob moment. This is all forever be known. Side show kitless. Um, but yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, up to you if, if you want to turn it into a heist type situation. But although, we probably need consent. We can't just like unconsensually make someone sign a pact to, <laughs> to collaborate. You can just forge it now. Got any oh, spare yeah. parchment? Don't do Bella? Oh, okay. I, aforementioned yeah. faction, agree to whatever bollocks the Winter King needs. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Right, who can who can write with like a dwarveny type uh, script? Cool, done. Shh, signed. Oh. Next, you know, just work your way down the list and just forge Same everybody's. Legend. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. So when when Arya, when do you want to deal with this food situation? When do you want to help them with that? I will. You could just go run after. You could. So I, see, for it. I was going to say you could just run after the king. Though, right, because he did just yeah. leave. So if you wanted to follow oh. up on that, you could go that way. Yes, 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 absolutely. Mm. I will do it this way then. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll be. We can leave the, the B team have... here to try and sort out some kind of uh, a yeah. plan with Don Dravella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I'd be following the king and like I'm like well not. Unless, like, unless anybody goes with her, of course. Up, obviously, yeah. like I don't mind if people go with her or not, but I just feel like, you know. I, I wouldn't mind there being a conversation about maybe why Kitlith doesn't want to go to the Elf Queen and maybe why Bastille is like, but isn't that the next logical choice? Mm. It's not the worst yeah, conversation to have. 
Depends. What does Reach think the next logical kind of step would be? I would say at the moment it would be the Elf Queen go that way. I know it's a long way, but yeah, and she does seem to be powerful. So yeah, ideally, we want just story, but she's unavailable at the moment. So Elf Queen, then just story would be the order that I would do. Hopefully, mm -hmm. just story is more available then. But mm -hmm. mm. yeah, let her go and her kill down a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, and if we get both of them, anyone else should be quite easy after that. Mm. That should be majority of it done. Yeah, because it's yeah. the two fucking like, female legends of the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's... But as is a big one, the Elf Queen. That's... That's the hard one. To be honest, as well, I think enough of you know enough about the Elf Queen. Maybe save Bastiel, because you probably mm. weren't told much about her for any reason. But the. Yeah. I think people know enough about her that she's well regarded if not liked does that make sense like she's not like loved like justoria by everybody that's in like the kingdom or whatever um there's a fair amount of propaganda from the kingdom that is you know the elf queen some kind of weird alien type woman i don't mean an alien from space oh. i just mean alien to normality right not yep. human life elf kind matters to her human kind it doesn't so that message is like you know amongst the nobility as it were of a uh, the kingdom. But keep in mind the Wizard King still decided to have like a wood elf as his crusader knight for him. So the like the head of his armies was an elf. He didn't mm -hmm. seem to mind that much, did he? When it was like useful to him. But uh, the elf queen is of a high enough position in the world that if she was supporting something, it would likely help pull other people to that cause. So it's definitely um, a huge win if you've got her. Just the same as it would be with Justoria, but maybe more so because if the Elf Queen gave a fuck about something that wasn't elves, that's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Right. Because yeah. arguably she could just defeat the demons herself. Hmm. Okay. Like, yeah, but then so could Magna, arguably. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a big deal. Uh, so we'll leave you three in with uh, that conversation, right? We'll have the Elf Queen, do we go, do we not go, in a minute. Yeah. But we, we, I think we follow Arya as you like run after the, uh, the king. Yep. Yeah, and like you know, you eventually like you're starting to catch up to him. You can like shout at him for his attention, or you can just yeah, run like, up and whatever. Your yeah. Highness. And he kind of like um, stops like as he's like power walking. He kind of stops, turns around. Yeah, and... I'm, I'm kind of like trying to walk towards him, you know, quite quickly as well. You know, we get this camera angle from low down, looking Catch away up. up to the crosswalk, you know, with all the kind of lava flows on the background and stuff, and he just kind of stands there, looking at you. I'll, I'll like catch up to him and and be, um. So I I I like I said, I'm happy to to help with the the issue of. Increasing the the yield of the um, what was it? It's not an orchard. Yeah, it's just it's just the underground growth house. growth kind of caves, as it were. Like you can just yes. say the, the the food growing project or whatever. Like the food supplies, yeah. yeah. The, um, it it will likely take me quite a lot of time. Would it be okay with yourself if I wanted th that now? Your assistance in this matter would be greatly appreciated by me. You would be... You have no idea, in fact, what this means. And he kind of just like mutters that a bit to himself and then kind of like gestures with his hand to follow him as he like marches on. Yeah. And I'll say that from the conversation you had we had i do believe i get an idea of what this means to you i get the idea that your biggest priority the thing that was heavily on your heart was the, this this fear that you still need the people from outside to provide food to trade for food with them so i understand what it's like to want to be able to care for your own without needing anybody else. Mm. People will always need people, 
I see this as a truth to the world. Your friends, your colleagues, they do speak true when they say that uniting people would be progress we could all oh, yes. see. However, oh yes, absolutely. Oh, sorry. The cost of that is, in fact, time we may not have as a result of this incursion from the south. And he kind of like walks on a bit, and he stops again, and then he's like, kind of like exhales a bit, and he says, "The second problem to this would be that it could be seen as a threat to." Magna. And he just starts walking again. I'll and ask for one of your your people to, to, to show me or would you like to witness? Follow me. Oh, throwing in there. <laughs> I'm not sure, I mean he's not seen the sword of magic, so I'm part of me is yeah, no, it just says follow me, like... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> follow me! <laughs> follow me! I follow him! <laughs> and then, uh... Like, of course, I had to follow somebody, because otherwise I'd be lost here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, on that bombshell of him wondering if the alliance will uh, cause the evil emperor to get upset or not. Um, oh, shush. Sure. Yeah, right, and the fact that you're going to help him like, you know, fertilize the land in which he's trying to grow food for his people. It's going to be a big deal. Yes. So why don't we take our break there and we will return yeah. at like ten past nine and hope that we have a crumb bar with us then as well. I... Okay. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.